We all knew this was coming. Weeks after requesting a trade, but not getting one before the trade deadline Thursday, Anthony Davis took the court for the Pelicans Friday night and was booed during introductions. To be fair, I'd call that a mix of boos and cheers. The boos continued when Davis would touch the ball on offense, which is a lot, he's very good at basketball, in case you forgot. One of the reasons the Pelicans might have wanted to trade Davis prior to the deadline was they didn't have the stomach for what was to come the rest of the year, the boos being part of that. Pels fans are booing Anthony Davis every possession and neither Gail Benson nor Del Demps look happy about it, Ricky Sanders, at our Xander CFs, February 9, 2019 It's going to be an awkward rest of the season for New Orleans. Anthony Davis is playing, and starting, for the New Orleans Pelicans Friday night against the Timberwolves in a nationally televised game. Davis had been medically cleared for nearly a week now and wanted to play, but the Pelicans held him out in advance of the trade deadline to protect him from injury in case a trade they liked came together. None did. However, they will trade him this summer, so why not put him on the shelf for the rest of the season for the same reason? There's some logic to it for the Pelicans and Davis. Not, however, for the NBA League office. Brian Windhorst explained at ESPN. After reviewing its rules, the league office informed the Pelicans that they would be expected to play Davis, starting with Friday night's nationally televised game against the Minnesota Timberwolves, sources said. The league referred the Pelicans to rules put in place in 2017 that restrict teams from resting healthy players. The Pelicans, league sources said, were told that they would be subject to a fine of $100,000 per every game if Davis were benched. It would be a black eye to the NBA to rest a healthy Davis, people pay good money to see him play. It's one thing to put J.R. Smith in limbo, it's fair to ask if he's even a rotation player on a good team now, but doing it to Davis, one of the five, if not three, best players on the face of the earth, is something else entirely. Davis will play fewer than his average, 37 minutes a night, and he will be rested on half of back-to-backs, but he will play. The Pelicans, and Davis's suitors, will cross their fingers he stays healthy. Philadelphia traded for Tobias Harris, and brought in some depth with players such as James Ennis and Mike Scott. That prompted Milwaukee to respond and trade for Nikola Mirotic. Then Toronto up that and made a deal to bring in Marcus All. Boston stood pat, although they were happy on Thursday because Anthony Davis is still a Pelican, but has been playing much better basketball the past few weeks and has looked as good as anyone in the East. Why the arms race at the top of the East? LeBron James has a theory, one he told to Joe Barton of The Athletic. Those top teams in the East, yeah, they're going for it, James told The Athletic. Toronto is going for it, Milwaukee's going for it, Philly. Boston believes they can do it, too. They know they ain't gotta go through Cleveland anymore. Everybody in the East thinks they can get to the finals because they ain't gotta go through me, LeBron isn't entirely wrong here, him leaving did throw open the door in the East. That said, would things be that different if LeBron stayed in Cleveland with some variation of the roster we saw last season? The Cavs didn't have room to make dramatic improvements, and the fully healthy Celtics with Kyrie Irving likely would have been the favorite over them, and right now any of those top four teams could have knocked off those Cavaliers, even with LeBron. Without LeBron, however, the second round and beyond of the Eastern Conference playoffs is going to be incredible. Kevin Love is back. Love had surgery on an injured big toe on his left foot on November. Two and has been sidelined ever since. The Cavaliers made it official on Friday that Love will make his return in Washington. Tonight's starters, Colin Sexton, David N. Waba, Dang Ottle, Larry Nance Jr. And numeral zero, Kevin Love. Joe Gabriele, at Cavs Joe, February 8, 2019 Love averaged 19 points and 13.5 rebounds a night this season but only played in four games before his injury. 
While there had been some speculation about Love as a trade chip, however, his injury combined with the four-year, $120 million extension that kicks in next season, there were not many suitors. At 11-43 the Cavaliers have the third-worst record in the NBA. While they would never admit it publicly, they would love to finish in the bottom four in the league because each of those teams will have a 14% chance of winning the NBA draft lottery, read, the rights to Zion Williamson. If Love starts to lift the Cavaliers above this, he will quickly see a minutes restriction because of health concerns, of course. From the perspective of the young Lakers core, guys who had never heard their names in serious trade rumors before, let alone at the insane volume that came with the Anthony Davis talks, it had to be disturbing. The team was willing to trade them in a heartbeat. Did LeBron James want them traded? You could tell it got in their head during the 42-point beatdown earlier in the week in Indiana. Can the young Lakers put this behind them and make a playoff push behind a finally healthy LeBron? Thursday night's win in Boston was a good sign, but to clear everything up Lakers president Magic Johnson is going to meet with the players, reports Broderick Turner of the Los Angeles Times. Sensing that the Lakers have been weighed down by the persistent trade rumors over the last few weeks, Magic Johnson, the Lakers president of basketball operations, plans to meet with the team this weekend in Philadelphia, according to two people with knowledge of the situation not authorized to speak publicly on the matter. Johnson will talk to the Lakers about the Anthony Davis trade saga that nearly pulled them under, emphasizing that the NBA is a business and that this franchise is about winning championships and doing all it can to accomplish that goal. Johnson will listen to every player who wants to speak, hoping to have an open dialogue with his team so they can all move forward together, one person said. The Lakers should be the favorite to climb over the Clippers and back into the playoffs in the West, and maybe get all the way up to the 7th seed, hoping to avoid the Golden State side of the bracket, now that LeBron is back. The Clippers likely take a step back without Tobias Harris, although not as big a one as some think, but also in that mix is the upstart Kings, ahead of the Lakers by half a game, who upgraded at the deadline with Harris and Barnes. Still, the Lakers with LeBron were solidly in the playoffs before his groin injury and the win in Boston shows how they can climb back up the ladder. That said, the Lakers have a much tougher remaining schedule than the teams they are chasing. They can't afford to stumble for 10 games as guys sulk about the trade rumors then try to dig out of the hole they created, and Magic knows it. The impact of team meetings like this tend to be overrated, but it's easy to understand what Magic is thinking and hoping for with this get-together.